dust gets everywhere, especially if you look at it closely. Special cameras reveal a collection of different shapes and sizes. When magnified, these dust particles look like an alien universe of planets and mysterious creatures. But these miniature structures just aren't tolerated during the manufacture of electronic components in clean rooms. Dust particles just a thousandth of a millimeter can be detrimental here. Dust is rarely a health risk at home, but it's still got to go. The vacuum cleaner deals with the rough stuff. So what is household dust actually made of? A magnifying glass isn't enough. It calls for a specialist microscope. About 20% of this dust is made up of food crumbs. The biggest share, about 70%, is textile fibers from clothes and carpets. And the remaining 10% is a mixture of mostly hair and flakes of dead skin. So we actually produce most of the dust ourselves. We're veritable dust factories. Every day we shed more than 50 grams of textile fibers and lose around 100 hairs. And we produce about half a kilogram of skin flakes a year. Perfect food for dust mites. In just a single day we lose enough skin flakes to feed around one and a half million of them. To work in a clean room, each human dust ball has to cover up in elaborate suits and clean their shoes with adhesive tape. At home, the vacuum cleaner sucks up the larger dust particles, but then sets most of the fine dust free again. Fine dust is particles more than one ten thousandth of a millimeter. Here, they've been slowed down 200 times. This fine dust is often from natural sources and comes from outside. Some of it's traveled a long way. This grain of sand started in the Sahara Desert. These silicon compounds are so light that desert storms can push them high up into the stratosphere, where they're carried for thousands of kilometers from Africa to other continents. Tiny dust particles, only visible when magnified 40,000 times, can also infiltrate the home through windows. Soot from chimneys and car exhausts. Plant pollen. Even salt crystals from the ocean. They all become part of the eclectic mix that make up our household dust. As ironic as it seems, the oceans are the greatest producer of dust on Earth. The clean room is kept at positive pressure and that ensures that the dust stays outside. Air is filtered through these fine poured mats made from a fine fleece material. In the clean room, one particle of dust per litre of air is the limit. But at home it tends to be more than a billion particles. Wiping surfaces with a wet cloth helps get on top of this fine dust. The particles are caught in the water droplets and can be wiped off rather than smeared around. Wiping the surfaces dry afterwards removes the dust, together with the film of water. The same goes for the floor. After vacuuming, clean the floors with a wet cloth. Anywhere that shouldn't be treated with a damp cloth can be cleaned with a microfiber cloth. 
its large surface area allows the fabric to collect even very fine dust particles. Magnified a hundred times, its super-dense fibers become visible. Inaccessible places can be cleaned with a duster. The friction provides an electrostatic charge, which attracts dust particles. This too can only be seen clearly under a microscope. Even with the greatest of care, it isn't possible to keep the clean room dust free. Cleaning is just like at home, but it's slow and meticulous. Even so, there simply isn't an entirely dust-free room on Earth. And dust isn't all bad. It's home to microbes that train our immune systems. So overdoing the hygiene thing can encourage allergies and make life fairly uncomfortable. These windows are in need of a good clean. Are traditional household remedies up to the job? A 10% solution of ammonia tackles the dirt. It's more effective with warm water, which helps to dissolve the grime on the window pane. windows seem to attract dirt as if by magic. On the left is the cross-section of a window. The ammonia solution gives the glass and the dirt a negative electrostatic charge, so the dirt gets repelled from the glass. Modern cleaning products have the same effect. Professional window cleaner always washes the dissolved dirt particles off the window before using a squeegee to dry the surface. But what about lime scale? An old recipe suggests using a cold vinegar water mixture to follow the cleaning phase. Limescale consists of calcium and carbonic acid. Acetic acid or vinegar is stronger than carbonic acid, so it can penetrate the limescale. A high-speed camera running at 200 frames a second reveals the processes at work. An absorbent wash leather is best to dry the windows afterwards. Yet still, tiny water droplets escape. They dry very quickly and leave small stains on the glass. To avoid such setbacks, the professional uses a squeegee. The glass has to be really wet to allow the squeegee to push a wave of water in front of it. It washes the dirt off the window. The squeegee is thorough and leaves no water droplets behind it. A high-speed camera running at 200 frames a second can show the processes in detail. Newspaper is an old household tip for drying windows. It absorbs the last water droplets and is said to give the glass a particular shine. That's because both newsprint and windows used to contain lead, which used to produce a fresh lead shine. Today, the painstaking polishing with newspaper is a thing of the past. Magnifying the process 150 times, we can see how a microfiber cloth does a much better job than the paper cellulose ever could. Its many tiny fibers are shown on the left and can absorb a lot more water. There's one golden rule, 
never use a scouring pad to deal with tough stains. It may contain metal fibers and can scratch the glass surface. A microscope reveals the metal fibers that make up roughly 40% of the scouring pad. The remaining 60% are synthetic materials. The scouring pad leaves behind ugly scratches. They're not easily seen with the naked eye, but when magnified 50 times, they look like a miniature Milky Way. So why does dirt stick so stubbornly to glass? It's a smooth surface, so surely dirt shouldn't really stick to it. An electron microscope exposes the glass pane as anything but smooth. Magnified 10,000 times, its surface looks more like a landscape of hills and valleys. It's created when the main raw material, quartz sand and the added chemicals, bond together. And these valleys are excellent places for dust and dirt particles to get a foothold. Encrusted dirt is best removed using a scraper made for ceramic glass hobs or a special cleaning pad. A professional window cleaner has to do one thing above all else, make good headway. On average, they have to clean thousands of square meters of glass every year. So, to clean windows properly, you should add an ammonia-based cleaning product to warm water. Use a sponge to generously wet the window pane. Spray it with a vinegar solution and quickly follow up with an absorbent wash leather and then a microfiber cloth. Finished. And you see, you don't even have to be a professional.